You're watching TVC Breakfast. Thousands of Nigerian students seek education and opportunities abroad annually, but the staggering figures, uh, notwithstanding, the trend has only uh, continued to rise. Some have asked whether the country is awake to the push factors. Correspondent Theophilus Ilama reports. Nigeria retained its top ranking as the number one source of African students studying in the United States. This is according to a 2017 Open Doors report. Nigeria has over 12,000 students in the United States, and you are the number one uh, source of students for the U.S. And I think it's really clear. I think you have a very good education system. I think you have energetic, enthusiastic students who really have a vision for themselves for the future and are hoping to come and find uh, the, the education and the means to realizing their dreams through a United States education. The all right, joining me now is social commentator Shiji Bumi at DB Bennett. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Year in, year out, we see Nigerians send their children abroad or outside the country to study education. You hear people say that if they can go out of the country, let their children go out because of education. Now, what are the factors that are pushing you know, people out and are we aware or awake to these things? Yes, um, I, I was even surprised that um, the lady mentioned that we have like 12,000 people or students studying in the U.S. Because I, I, by now, I, 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 I thought it will have increased to like maybe 15, 20,000. The, mm. the last report said 11,710, that was in 2017. So, and I think um, one of the major factors is um, competitiveness. It's a global thing. Um, as of 2014, um, in United Kingdom, Nigeria was rated to um, beat India to second position because they were looking at the fact that by 2024, there will be 240,000. Po That's postgraduate we're talking about, not even undergraduate. Yeah. That they were looking at um, having like 248 uh, international students, which is um, being driven, that number is being driven by China. Um, and India taking the second position, obviously due to population. But Nigeria was um, seen as going to outwit, which will have happened now, that, because that was, report was five years ago. So global competitiveness is very, very important. And when you look at the drive of China, when you look at the drive of India, why they're doing that is, which is different from why we're doing it. As much as this is global competitiveness, how much impact is it having on the country? That's where I'm going now. Because China and India are doing it because they want the, the, the knowledge, they want the technical know-how to be able to get back to their country and, you know, um, rejig their economy, rejig their productivity, their industrialization. But most times when we see, when our people go out there, they don't even want to come back in. So mm -hmm. that's the, but, you know, in, in an economy like this, in, in which is now globalized, you need to, to be at par with... Um, Every, with your, your colleague in any part of the world. How do we do that quickly? I think w w with what is going on now, we will still be fixated on having that uh, exposure till right. we are able to fix our educational system and right. come back to, to Nigeria. Shijibumi Adibi Bennett, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Moving on now, thousands of Nigerian students seek education opportunities abroad annually, but the staggering figures notwithstanding, the trend has only continued to rise. Some have asked whether the country is awake to the push factors. Correspondent Theophilo Zelama has more on this. Nigeria retained its top ranking as the number one source of African students studying in the United States. This is according to a 2017 Open Doors report. Nigeria has over 12,000 students in the United States, and you are the number one uh, source of students for the U.S. And I think it's really clear. I think you have a very good education system. I think you have energetic, enthusiastic students who really have a vision for themselves for the future and are hoping to come and find uh, the, the education and the means to realizing their dreams through United States education. The International Education Exchange data released by the Institute of International Education, IIE, shows that there are more than 12,000 Nigerian students currently pursuing their educational goals in the United States, an increase of 9.7% from 2016. Little wonder that educational institutions abroad come to Nigeria to get prospective students enrolled at their schools. 
I know Nigerians have a lot of options. They could stay here in Nigeria, they could go to other countries. But the U.S. is a big pool because the truth is that it has the best quality of education. Um, when you look at rankings done by higher, higher education institutions or organizations, you find that most of the top schools in the world are based in the U.S. For nearly three decades, Nigeria has been producing graduates in large numbers, but many remain worried that the standard of education has not improved to compete globally. John Amina, a social commentator, Shijibumi Adebi Bennett. Shijibumi, good morning. It's nice to have you join me right now. My pleasure, Jimai. Now, when mm -hmm. it comes to education, uh, Nigerians have proven to the whole world that they can be excellent in reading, they can be excellent in invention, they can be excellent in anything that has to do with education anywhere in the world, from Ukraine to the United States to Canada to, you know, uh, UK and all of that. But back home here, we, we don't seem to, uh, you know, match that record across the world. What do you think is really the, the challenge back home, if we have to start from there? <coughs> I think the challenge is... Um the everyday challenge that we've been facing, things have been deteriorating. Um, there's decadence in every sector mm. because if you can also remember, w while growing up, we, we used to hear people used to come to UCH, even from as far as Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and um, there were international students in UHI, in IFE. Mm. There was a time that South Africans were even given scholarships to come and study here. So we, we were doing very well. We were doing very well. And then um, the rot in the educational system, like every other uh, facet of our economy of our, or our polity, has also contributed to what we have now. So, and by and large, I, I think if we can get um, our educational system sorted out, then we can, we, we, we can still get back to the basis and become if, like a all right. If we have to talk about the strategy moving forward and, and ensuring that there is, there is something decisive and deliberate about it, where should we start from right now? I think we have to start from the basis. That's um, the primary education. Mm. As I'm talking to you now, it's like we, um, the private sector have taken over that, <laughs> that sector. Mm -hmm. Secondary education, they have, they have taken over that sector. And uh, you know, when it comes to the tertiary institution, it's now a 50-50. Because it's all, when you can afford it, you don't even put your, your words in, um, private, um, in public in universities. Public universities. And the public universities have like three categories. We have the, a, the um, level A, level B, and level C. And even if you want to really give because of patriotism or because you still want your child to be in Nigeria, you go for level A. It's only when you don't have the choice or you don't meet the cutoffs that you, you go for B and C. So these are the things that, that are happening. We have to start from the, from, from the beginning because all these schools we're talking about, all these schools are public schools over mm. there. Because they, they also have some mm. private universities, but exactly. they, 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 they are not as popular as this public schools. We, we even see in close by Rwanda where uh, private schools are closing up and folding, that folding up. That is what we're saying, because, uh, the Rwandan the example, mm. the Rwandan template. Because even the private schools there are not just private schools by individuals. They are private schools owned by PTAs mm. and private schools owned by, uh, by churches, mm. by missionaries. But people are still taking their words from those schools to put in public schools. All right. We have to leave you here now. Shijibumi Adibi Bennett, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Moving ahead now, thousands of Nigerian students seek education opportunities abroad annually, but the staggering figures notwithstanding, the trend has only continued to rise. Some have asked whether the country is awake to the push factors. Fiofilo Zelaba has details. Nigeria retained its top ranking as the number one source of African students studying in the United States. This is according to a 2017 Open Doors report. Nigeria has over 12,000 students in the United States, and you are the number one uh, source of students for the U.S. And I think it's really clear. I think you have a very good education system. I think you have energetic, enthusiastic students who really have a vision for themselves for the future and are hoping to come and find uh, the, the education and the means to realizing their dreams through a United States education. The International Education Exchange data released by the Institute of International Education, IIE, shows that there are more than 12,000 Nigerian students currently pursuing their educational goals in the United States, an increase of 9.7 percent from 2016. Little wonder that educational institutions abroad come to Nigeria to get prospective students enrolled at their schools. I know Nigerians have a lot of options. They could stay here in Nigeria, they could go to other countries, but the U.S. is a big pool because the truth is that it has 
the best quality of education. Um, when you look at rankings done by higher, edu higher education institutions or organizations, you find that most of the top schools in the world are based in the U.S. For nearly three decades, Nigeria has been producing graduates in large numbers, but many remain worried that the standard of education has not improved to compete globally. We have good policies, but we should put good people in place to carry out the policies. And government should let them do it. Education shouldn't be a political setup in Nigeria because that is the tomorrow of Nigeria. It doesn't have to be a politician to, to be minister of education. We are talking of education, we are not talking of local governments. While studying abroad may be good news to those who can afford it, it drains the country of important revenue that could help revitalize the sector locally. In some cases, it has also given employers of labor reason to discriminate against those who study in the country. Theophila Silama, TVC News, Lagos. Well, joining me now is a social commentator, Shijibumi Adebi Bennett. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Now, the, the education sector is said to be in crisis. And even from uh, the education tourism, we see that we lose about 1 trillion naira annually. Um, how much impact I is this having on... Are we doing enough in the first place to ensure that uh, this does not go the way it should? And are we putting the right pos policies in place as stakeholders are calling for? I don't think so. And I, I, I believe that um, even when we say Rome was not built in a day, we have to see the plan and the blueprint for Rome to be built so that we know um, how to go about it. Um, and like I said the other time, we have to start from the basis because in, in, we always strive on effect, cause, uh, cause and effect in Nigeria, and we look at we look at problems sometimes from top down instead from from down to the top. <coughs> so we have to start from the primary, then to the secondary, then to the tertiary. Now we saw um, um, in the news like last week when the governor of Kaduna State enrolled his, his son, son into a in public school. So now reports have it that 500 schools have been renovated in the last two years mm -hmm. by his administration. That's a good step. And we, we can see not only the infrastructure, but the quality of education that that governor is trying. And there are also talks of even returning schools yes. to you know, the initial owners. Yes, to the initial owners. Now, now getting back to your question, because the amount of money we lose if it's, in our, if it's in our economy, the ripple effects alone, the mm -hmm. chain reaction that it will cause. Look at a university like John Hopkins, and I was listening to someone that um, said, a reporter that said uh, someone was invited to be a minister for, I think, um, education or health in Nigeria by this administration the last time. And the person said, I don't, he doesn't think he, he can come because for his school, his university, it's like $90 billion a budget annually. Hmm. But the whole country has a budget of 25 or less than 30 billion dollars. So those are the things. And out of these ways, it's still having like one trillion era being sifted out because people want quality education. So we have to find a way to make sure this money remains, start from the beginning, from but, the basis. But some also say that we are not even creating that enabling environment, so to speak, in terms of the discrimination we see when it comes to getting jobs, the, the attention is given to those who get certificates from outside of the country and so Ob Obviously, that. yes, because an employer wants to make money and the thing, <coughs> and what wants results. So the thing uh, there now is employers want people with international experience, exposure, so they don't need to train you so much. Because when you are in these schools abroad, you do internship, you do a lot of programs. So you are already accustomed to that uh, work experience that you need. Mm. But look at what we have here in Nigeria. We also run internships. For how many, for how many courses? There is the one year and there is the three months. That's There's for some months. special courses. We're talking, I've never had maybe my brother who is a business administration undergraduate say to me that he, he, he wants to run um, an internship. So these are for technical you know, um, st studies. We need a situation whereby we can expose our undergraduates to the working work environment, even before they leave the university. Entrepreneurship. I, I, I just saw a report of Faith Foundation because I passed through that school as well. And I, and I know that they're having, they have these um, 
um, arrangement now with some universities in Lagos, but even as 300 level students, you come in, you have a work experience. Mm. One is even with, with my company, like a protege. So those are the things we need. Mm. so that people can understand how this thing works. All right, all right, Shijibumi Adebi Bennett, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me.